It's important that our two countries have the best of ties in all areas. The natural tendency of the two countries and people to be very close to each other, as they have been for centuries, uh, was interrupted for a number of decades, and we're trying now to make up for lost grounds. Tillerson travelled next to Doha in another stalled attempt to resolve a five-month diplomatic and trade dispute between Qatar and four other Gulf states, including Saudi Arabia. But with the opposing sides yet to engage in an open dialogue, the crisis in the Gulf looks set to continue. Joining me now is Kyle Orton, a research fellow at the Henry Jackson Society. Uh, now, Kyle, tens of thousands of Iraqis heeded a call to arms uh, three or four years ago after the Islamic State group seized a third of the country's territory and they, they formed the Popular Mobilisation Forces, or PMF, which of course has been receiving funding and training from Tehran. So are they likely to heed Mr Tillerson's call? I, I doubt it. And Mr. Tillerson very slightly misspoke and he said the militia should go home, implying that they weren't Iraqis. Uh, a lot of the leadership actually is Iraqi. It's just that they defected to Iran during the Iran-Iraq war. And they spend all of their time in Iran. They work for Iran. Uh, the leader of them is Hadi al-Amri and Abu Mahdi al mohandas Both of them are Iranian agents and assets and have been for decades. Uh, so his message was correct. It was in the sense that Iran should leave Iraq to govern itself. But he actually misspoke in terms of saying that these militias should go away. Uh, at, when you said about the PMF, they did heed the fatwa and a lot of Shias came in to fight under that banner. But the actual infrastructure of what is the Hashtag Shabi or the PMF is the Iranian militias that fought against the Americans during the occupation years from 2003 uh, to 2011. So actually the Iranians co-opted that movement of people quite quickly and they've now managed to get the PMF integrated into the Iraqi state. So it's difficult to imagine rooting them out. Uh, but as I say, Mr. Tillerson's message was a, was a good one. If you're going to settle Iraq's politics, you need to get the most radically sectarian actors out of there. But the reality is that this is a highly unstable country in an already unstable region. I mean, how much weight does Rex Tillerson actually have? I mean, again, is anybody actually going to listen to what he says and, and uh, as a result, uh, withdraw? The Americans have been losing ground in Iraq for really quite some time, mostly because of the pullout in 2011 and then an attempt to withdraw from the region more generally and more broadly uh, in the years since. Uh, one place where it might be helpful to uh, test Mr. Tillerson's messages in Syria, where these militias, a lot of them, as I say, Iraqi citizens formally, even though they work ideologically and materially for Iran, uh, have been deployed in Syria to keep alive the regime of Bashar al-Assad. So it would be helpful. They are foreign militias they are an occupying force and American uh, strength could be used to push them out. Groups like Hezbollah too from Lebanon. So there are places where the Americans could push back. But as you say, they've been losing ground to Iran for really quite some time. And as the Islamic State recedes, Iran is filling the vacuum. And Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javid Sarif has already berated Tillerson's remarks as having been influenced by, of course, Iran's oil-rich regional rival Saudi Arabia. The reality is, though, is that this current White House administration have made it very clear where their support lies. Right, which is where it should have been from the start. America should have backed her allies who accept the state system in the region and in the world rather than the revolutionary theocracy, which has murdered its way across Syria that Mr. Zarif works for, uh, which attempts to erase the borders of the region and attempts to assert its own hegemony. So the attempt to work with allies to contain the Iranian revolution is the correct impulse. It's just a question of whether any action is actually put in place to do that. So at the end of the day, what does this mean for the Iraqi military? military on the ground. The Iraqi military, unfortunately, is uh, less powerful than the militias. And after the Mosul operation, which was rather well planned and used the professional forces to avoid any of the sectarian nastiness, it didn't completely avoid it. There were some terrible scenes as the end came in the city. Uh, but the worst part was that the professional forces got chewed up, which means that the militias are in place now to overpower and to dominate and to take the political win in the aftermath. Uh, so actually, there are a great number of problems in terms of security and politics, and the two are obviously intertwined uh, in Iraq's future. The elections soon will tell us how this is shaken out, uh, but we will have to wait till then. Carl.